Last night, the Minnesota Timberwolves clinched their second playoff appearance since 2003 with a 109-104 win over the Clippers, leading to what some pundits have called an over-celebration after the final second ticked off the clock. My question is, when did celebrating a big win that puts you in a better position after years of not making the playoffs become such a big deal? Don't we want all our teams to want to have the same amount of success as badly as we the fans do? This wasn't the number one seed winning their first playoff game in the first round. This was a historic night for all of T-Wolf Nation and a very personal night for former Clipper, Clipper Patrick Beverly. There was a true March Madness in April feel because of these play-in games, including the sudden death one, even though this game wasn't a sudden death last night. And those who want to laugh or poke fun at Minnesota for their reaction are really, in my opinion, underestimating the importance of this game to the franchise and to the players. People always complain that pro athletes don't really care or they're just in it for themselves. Yet when we see a pro team react the way Minnesota did, they're mocked and poked fun at. Look at Patrick Beverly, who was overcome by emotion after sending home the team to a better worse position, the team that sent him home earlier in his career. You want to tell me that was fake? You want to tell me this game wasn't massive for a guy that's played under the brightest lights the sport has to offer? My point is very simple. It's a pretty cool look to see how much these games and franchises mean to the guys who are in it for the people that support them and the organization or franchise that they represent. I'm going to bring in David Cohn. going to bring in Blaine Crane, co-host. And look, I know this game wasn't the sudden death one uh, of the night, but with the sudden death ones and the other games that help you in positioning, this does have somewhat of a March Madness and April feel to it, and I don't understand why people are getting so gassed up at Minnesota, who's done nothing. This isn't like the Lakers won the game. This isn't like some of the teams, the perennial teams that we've seen that have had success lately, even though I know it has kind of fallen off the cliff for the Lakers. But this was big for Minnesota. Let him enjoy it. Let Patrick Beverly get a little emotional. It's part of it. Let these guys celebrate a win. Let them celebrate I don't understand it. What, I don't understand what the problem is. Look, a couple of rules when it comes to celebrating. One, <coughs> don't be disrespectful. I don't yep. think they were disrespectful in any way. And don't celebrate at a bad time. I guess that's what a lot of people are saying this morning is, well, this was bad timing because you haven't won anything. But like what I'm talking about in that scenario is when you score a touchdown and you're down 30 and yeah, you decide totally to celebrate different. a la Michigan against yeah. Georgia. What are you celebrating? Stop yeah, doing it's like that. The that's guy, bad timing. It, this is a victory. You won the game. It's and you like, made the playoffs. It's like the guy that makes the tackle like a running back breaks a run for like 15, 20 yards. That's another one. And they make a tackle and you're like down 28 and you get up and like do like the throat slit sign. You're not Bobby Boucher. No, like you got you're losing. It's not the right time, but this is the right time. You haven't been there in 18, 19 years. Not that you were going to be out of it, but not you got there and you won a game. You want a exactly. game that puts you in a better position in a postseason form, and, which is a big deal. And this shows that these guys care about winning. Making that playoff spot matters to them. They have pride in their mm -hmm. franchise. To me, this wasn't something where th th this wasn't an immaturish act that's disrespectful in any yeah. way. And Blaine, people are like, oh, well, you know, you would never see Kobe Bryant do this, or you would never see this franchise do this. But th this isn't Kobe Bryant's team. Kobe Bryant's not on this team. The T Wolves haven't accomplished anything in a long time. And sometimes, it's nice to celebrate when you're able to pull something off every now and then. I hate when people just go straight to Kobe Bryant's mentality. There will never be another Kobe Bryant's yeah. mentality. But that's what you're the hearing. The dude's a one-on-one. The closest thing realistically, realistically to him was what, Jordan? I think mentality-wise? Yeah. Kobe was the closest thing to Jordan mentality. Okay, I'm not going to go down this No, way. no, no, I'm serious. I'm not trying to, like, seriously. That's the way it needs to be. Okay, no, well, I he, no, he just brought, yeah, he's brought up Kobe, yeah. Kobe. So I was saying it always goes back to Kobe or Jordan to Kobe or however it works. I mean, if you're the Minnesota, you haven't made it to the playoffs since 2018, right? Stuff like this matters. Celebrate. I always live by this, this motto, you celebrate all wins. Mm -hmm. You celebrate them. I mean, they got the Grizzlies in the first round. You never know. I mean, they're a young group. They're getting better and better and great for, for Patrick Beverly. Have I really ever liked Patrick uh, Beverly as an NBA player? No, I haven't. I haven't. He plays great defense. He's just annoying in everything he does. But there's a time for celebrating. And let them have fun. There's nothing worse than people who just try to suck the fun out of everything. Yeah. And there will always be those people. And it's just terrible to see. And I hate to even listen to it because uh, to let the guys enjoy the win. They made it to the playoffs. Yeah, th there's always that one person in the group that, you know, there's like four or five of y'all. And you're like, yeah, man, we're, we're going to go outside. We're going to go to this party. 
and and ninety percent of the people are excited, and there's one person like, man, this party's gonna suck, man. Debbie right. Downers, man. They're Debbie everywhere. Downers. They're just everywhere. Debbie Downers. And they're the they're worst everywhere. to be around. And it wasn't like you made a good point though. It wasn't disrespectful. Yeah. It wasn't like they were walking over there pointing yes. at the Clippers like, ha ha, whatever. Or, you know, the, it was it was chippy the whole game, and this was kind of you know the the. You know, screw you at the end, yeah. I guess is the best way to put it. Wasn't disrespectful. They were celebrating something that they ain't got to celebrate in a while because they rarely make the postseason. And then when they get there, they don't do anything. And the way they won this is pretty interesting. If I'm the yeah. Grizzlies, I'm a little, and we've been gassing the Grizzlies up. I'm a little bit worried when I'm watching B- Cat not foul make, not, out, foul out, <laughs> foul not out be a huge part win. of the win. And I'm watching Anthony Edwards, mm-hmm. who's from, you know, some realm far, far away. Uh, be able to pick up the slack and, and the guys around him and seeing the role players a little bit. I'm Memphis. I'm feeling good about it. I got Ja, who's you know the Cirque du Soleil scholarship yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. But if you're the Grizzlies, are you a little bit? Look, I wasn't. Up? I wasn't feeling great about this when when Cat fouled out, you know. But I knew that I had joined the fade B stamp crowd, and you Dude, just have to it's believe a real thing. in it. It's a you real have to thing. Believe in it, and the comeback. We'll get that later. Complete. It's a real thing. Well, so yeah, I mean, oh, go ahead. I mean, the stars showed up for the Timberwolves even with Cat out. I mean, D'Angelo Russell, 29. You knew D Russ was going to pop Edwards, off. Though. 30. I mean, and that's what you're going to need. Do they realistically have a chance in my mind against the Grizzlies? No, I don't think so. You don't think they have a chance? Well, not a not a not a big chance. Every team has a little chance, a little but not chance, a big one. The yeah. Grizzlies are an extremely good basketball team. I mean, they finished second in the West. In my opinion, is a tougher conference than the East. You know, especially playing against this, this that top five in the West is not a fun schedule to go through. But good for them. I'm glad they made it to the playoffs. I think this will be a first round exit for them. But at the end of the day. You're pushing to a brighter future, and your stars are young. Yeah, just don't suck the fun out of it. And the great thing, well, one thing about the celebration at the end of it, other than Patrick Beverly a little bit, no one really made it about themselves. Yeah, yep. right? I agree They celebrated with it with who? They celebrated I agree with, that. with the fans. No matter if you threw a jersey in the stands, mm-hmm. Patrick Beverly put in a beer on the interview at the end of it. They celebrated with their team. They celebrated with their fans, and that's what makes celebrations pure and enjoyable. They could have yeah. celebrated in a way that was inappropriate, and we would have still led with them today and been on their case about yeah. it, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, again, they were home, right? They were home. So uh, it's not like he was out there throwing his jersey in opposing fans' faces or over there pointing at the other mm-hmm. team. You know, I, I mean, celebrate a win. There's there's two things that w- w- when I look at, and then I want to move on to this, this Nets game, which, you know, Kyrie's just a, a wizard of the highest order. There's two things that, like, kind of really gas me up when it comes to or, or gets me, you know, about celebrating. I love celebrating. when you get gassed up. Yeah. One is when... Kind of like Blaine saying, you have the Debbie Downers or you have the people that kind of downplay the excitement or this, this, that, and the other, or we're not that jacked up about it. Then you have the other group of people that are like, oh, well, you should act like you've been there before. You should act like you've been there before. You really haven't been there before. Like, I heard that earlier today. Like, you really haven't been there before. Like, if I walked into Narnia tomorrow, I would look really, really happy to be there because I've never been there mm-hmm. before. So having success after the regular season for the, for the T-Wolves, just come on, guys. Just like you all, truck. let's move on. Hey, if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, go on over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Check out Crane & Company live every day from 2 to 3 Central where you can hear us spit it straight.